Russians are experiencing a shell famine due to numerous strikes on ammunition depots of the Defense Forces of Ukraine. According to Defense Express, this was stated by one of Russia's propagandists, Yegor Guzenko. According to him, the Russian army began to experience a shell famine after the destruction of depots in Toropets and Tikhoretsk. Those areas where there is active fighting now, there is this famine in form of limits being felt there. The 98th Airborne Division has problems at Chassiv Yar as well as a number of other units. I will not name them because there are a lot of them. Such problems are currently gaining momentum massively, he said. According to Guzenko, this is a recent phenomenon caused by the destruction of ammunition depots by Ukrainian drone attacks in Toropets, in the Tver region and Tikoretsk, in Krasnodar Krai, in the middle of September and said the attacks were continuing. He alleged the issue is particularly affecting those areas of the front where active assault operations are taking place. The 98th Airborne Division has this problem, as do a number of other units. I will not name them because there are too many, he said. He added that the problem was getting worse and rationing of artillery shells was being imposed on some units. He complained that even so, Russian troops were still being forced to assault Ukrainian positions without artillery support. He went on to imply that there was something criminal happening among Russia's commanders. In echoes of the complaints made by Yevgeny Prigozhin, the former leader of the Wagner PMC in May last year, Guzenko opined, but even if this happened, if some of the warehouses were destroyed, it doesn't mean that our factories suddenly stopped. The factories work every day, day and night. This ammunition goes somewhere. The mill blogger then asked, where does this ammunition go? Why is there so few of it for the troops? According to an Estonian intelligence assessment, the strike by the Ukrainian armed forces on the Toropets depot on September the 18th could have destroyed as much as two months' worth of Russian artillery ammunition along with Iskander and Tochka U 122mm rockets and aerial bombs. Russia's Defense Ministry plans to enlist around 20,000 people currently held in pre-trial detention to fight in Ukraine, the investigative news outlet Important Stories media outlet reported, citing anonymous military and legal sources. According to a military official who spoke to Important Stories, efforts are already underway to identify who among the thousands of defendants awaiting trial might be fit for military service, with 40% expected to be taken. The enlistment plan reportedly involves selecting 100 defendants from each of Russia's 210 pre-trial detention centers. iStories, citing federal prison statistics, noted that 106,000 people were held in pre-trial detention as of early 2024, though that figure includes individuals under investigation and convicted criminals. The reported plan comes a week after federal lawmakers passed legislation allowing criminal defendants to serve in the military, closing a loophole that previously limited enlistment to convicted criminals and suspects under police investigation. Those changes now face a single vote in the Federation Council, after which President Vladimir Putin is expected to sign it into law. Sources told important stories that authorities are targeting criminal defendants to avoid sparking public unrest with a new wave of mobilization. A source close to the military's general staff said the defense ministry turned to criminal defendants after running out of convicted prisoners willing to volunteer for the war in Ukraine. At the same time, according to one of the lawyers, even before the law was passed in Moscow, there was no shortage of people willing to sign a contract with the Ministry of Defense in any of the pretrial detention facilities. According to lawyer Dmitry Zakvatov, the penal colony and pre-trial detention center are also recruiting people to sign a contract with the defense ministry by tightening the conditions of detention. Zakvatov links the active recruitment campaign to the authorities' reluctance to announce a second wave of mobilization, the publication writes. At the same time, there is information that the number of prisoners ready to go to war is decreasing. They say that prisoners are not an endless resource. Therefore, the decision to send defendants to the so-called SVO indicates a decrease in the influx of prisoners to the front. In particular, those convicted under light articles, those who do not have long to do time, are not very eager to go to the front line.
ex-advisor of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Sahi Kuzan, has revealed details of several operations of the main intelligence directorate involving the Russian military. They include the recruitment of a cadre military officer, Daniel Alferov, who helped 11 military men of the Russian Federation to surrender and also to implement the blowing up of the Russian army officers' headquarters. This is written by analysts of The Telegraph. Also, the main intelligence directorate organized a sabotage on the Russian missile ship Serpukov in the Kaliningrad region. The operation was carried out by a Russian sailor who later crossed the border and switched to the side of Ukraine. The ship, a carrier of Kinzhal and Onyx cruise missiles, was at the Russian naval base in Baltisk, Kaliningrad region and, according to the DRU, could have been redeployed to reinforce the Russian Black Sea Fleet. The details of the operation were kept secret for several months and only in July, during a press conference, were the details revealed. The explosion on the ship was carried out by a former Russian soldier of the Russian Baltic Fleet, pseudonym Goga, who had access to state secrets, the Telegraph said. Besides, after the missile attack on a children's hospital in Kiev, one of the Russian pilots addressed a Ukrainian chatbot, passing secret information about his unit. The pilot was shocked by the attack on civilians, which prompted him to cooperate with Ukrainian intelligence. He handed over important personal documents and other valuable data. Against this backdrop, the analysts at The Telegraph point out that the Putin-led Russian government is continuing its course of authoritarianism resembling USSR 2.0. The latest crackdown on opposition leaders and independent journalists only exacerbates the country's crisis. But despite these challenges, new opportunities for opposition forces are beginning to emerge. According to experts, support from international partners is growing and the exchange of information between the militaries is giving new chances for revitalizing the opposition. For example, successful sabotage and actions damaging the Russian army may become a catalyst for changes in society. It is expected that with increased international support, Russian activists and the military, dissatisfied with the Kremlin's aggressive policies, may unite. This opens up the possibility for new forms of resistance within Russia as well as boosting the morale of opposition forces.